Hey guys, welcome to Cat and Beats and welcome to Rhythm Theory. This will be your first video in a series of music theory videos, um, which I think will be very beneficial for you uh, because I would like people to be able to say, I have this groove in my head or I have this song in my head and I want to translate it to Ableton. And uh, well, music theory is a part of that as well, as well as mixing and mastering. But let's just start with the music theory and the programming and showing little tips and tricks within Ableton as well. So make sure to subscribe for the rest of the series. And if you do need help, because I didn't answer any of your questions that you might have had, you know, then you can always contact me, academies at gmail.com and we can start together. So let's uh, work together on some music theory. And um, I'm going to start with the basis and work all the way to more advanced things. First, I open up a uh, Kits 909, whatever, and uh, I open up a MIDI clip. Now, the MIDI clip generally looks like this. And basically, it says 116th. And what most people will tend to do is they'll just kind of click some things in there. And because it will groove around, it will sound... It'll sound like something. But the problem is now the computer is programming you and you should be able to know why this sounded the way it did and why it made you feel the way it did. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. So to understand that, we're going to go to one fourth notes, one eighth notes, one sixteenth, one one thirty second, and we're going to have to understand these things. So let's go with one fourth first. One fourth really only means that you have a bar length of one and there can be four elements in there, four notes. That's it's that simple. So if we have to have four notes, let's start with the most basic of basic notes. We'll start with a kick and the most basic of basic patterns, a four to the floor pattern. We're a bit fast for a four to the floor pattern, so let's get to into a more you know general accepted four, four to the floor pattern. And this Four to the floor pattern is used in ranges from disco to uh, tech house to uh, whatever anything you hear with doof, 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 to gabber music. It's all the same, same principle, four to the floor. Now, the second part which you need to understand is that there's four kicks on the floor. But generally speaking, there's also a clap or a snare in there. And generally speaking, they fall on the two and the four. So let's just go to the two and the four. And add that in. So the two means this. This is one, this is two, this is three, and this is four. You can also see that up here. You see one, this is 1.2, 1.3, and 1.4. So this sounds like this. Extremely basic stuff, but it's very useful stuff to know. We're also going to go into funk drumming and stuff where we will place the snare a little bit different, but that comes a little bit later. So now that we know this, yeah, we have this pattern here, which is the most basic of basic patterns. Let's go here and click one eighth notes. Now, as before, the one stands for the bar length and the eight stands for the amount of notes that you can place in it. But what do one eighth notes do with your rhythm feel inside of you? What are, what are you gonna, you know, right now I'm going pop, 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 and it's very tight. And I'm like, yes, it's a tight rhythm. Rah. But let's say I want it a little bit more loose and I want people to be a little bit more happy. We can play it in the eighth, eighth notes and we can play something called an upbeat. And the upbeats go in between the fourth notes. And in between, normally speaking, people will put in a hi-hat. Awesome. So now that we have this awesome one eighth note feel, what we can do is... Um, go one step further because with eighth notes they're important with this one and this two and this three and this four they're very important so a little bit less important very important so normally i would say play these eighth notes a little bit softer and let's go to 16th notes bam now just like the one eighth note just like the one fourth note there is now 16 notes in there and this is where Drumming, making drum patterns will get more interesting, but also pro programming your keys around this and programming other elements around this thing that I'm about to tell you. So when you want things to be more fun, again, one more up, or you want people to groove a little bit more, the only thing you need to do is use something or utilize something called ghost notes. Now, ghost notes tend to be placed on the 
second sixteenth or the fourth sixteenth again here and there. So around the one eighth note. Okay, uh, that's how I like to remember it anyway. And uh, let's just play in a um, a soft little ghost note. Soft little ghost note. A ghost note is a soft played note. Okay, and place that over here. And let's just play another one over here. Okay, whatever. You'll just see. Okay, so right now we have that, and you can see that the difference between this very tight feel from the beginning with just one fourth note to this to finally this makes the groove sound more alive. If I would have placed this on the one eighth note, it wouldn't be as alive anymore. It would still be kind of like, brr, you know? Um, now we can get even a step further to make this groove come even more alive. And instead of saying, let's go to the one thirty second notes, we'll go there, but not right now, it's too advanced. One thirty second notes, we're gonna do something, we're gonna put groove into this with a swing button and I like to use this. So if I just command A, so that's control A, so to basically select everything and then press command shift U, I can control the quantization, which means how it's snapped to the grid, how it's snapped into these 1 16th notes. And what I like to use is 1 16th triplets. And then here you can adjust how much groove is in there. Um, so if I just put in a 100%, what you'll notice is that all the notes on the fourth, so around around this hi-hat, so all the 16th notes will be placed a little bit to the right. And just have a listen to what that does. You hear the difference? It makes you want to groove a little bit more. So this little 1 16th triplet thing, you, you, you get this like groovy part to it. So I find that very useful um, to, to, to program any type of house notes. Now, for instance, let's say that you want it even more groovy. And let's say that you want to have two kicks in here. Now, if you place this kick, if you place two kicks next to each other, next to each other any drummer will not play the two kicks at the same velocity. What they'll do is they'll play the first kick a little bit softer than the kick that has to hit hard. Now the ones that always have to hit hard is going to be one, two, three, four, and especially the one. So we can just place that kick softly over there and make sure that it has the same groove. And let's move, let's move this one over here. Okay, so very happy now that we have that whole little feel going on. And um, let's continue to show you another little trick in this groove thing. And then we're going to get out of this groove and go into a more tech housey thing. So another little trick is here, an envelope. And what we can do with this envelope um, is that we're going to be making a fill. So we're going to be making a thing at the end of the fourth bar. Going to get there in a second. And we're going to make it so it sounds like, yeah, I'm going to go back into this one bar. And yeah, all the people are going to be like, uh, that's the one bar. So first and foremost, let's go to duplicating this loop. Click on it twice and we'll get four bars. Now normally drummers will add in some type of element every fourth bar or every eighth bar, or every sixteenth bar, but there will be some type of element. And with fourth bar, I literally mean fourth bar right there. And normally there will be some type of thing here. So let's just program in some type of thing. Now, Ableton has been so courteous to say, I gave you a reverse button and an inverse button, which is great. You can turn it around. And then you have something else that's been gonna play. So we have the one there. You know, but it's it's difficult because then you're gonna give yourself this 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 difficulty of um, is it gonna sound good? And I'm gonna just have to experiment and it's and and it's fun. But let's just say I wanted to go to do gut 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 something like that. So. 
that's all 16th notes, by the way. So you can play that in. Let's do another little trick. So instead of saying um, I want to use the reverse button, let's just say now I want it to be extra groovy. And I want this clap, this one here, to be extra cool. I want this clap to be a little bit soft so I can go back into the groove. And let's just Command A, Command Shift U, and 16th note to place it in the right place. So let's just say I want this clap to be with reverb, with a nice big reverb on it. Now, I like using sends, so I'm going to be using sends. And if you want to make a send, you just right click and then make an insert return track. They call it return track, sorry. And here's the shortcut for it. So let's just make a reverb here on this return track. And I don't care what the settings are right now. I just need it to be 100% dry wet and I want a decay time because this is an effect reverb, okay? And let's go in here and click on E. And let's click on the A button so I can send it. All right. And let's go to this last snare here. So as you can see, now I'm in a different type of grid. I'm gonna to go to this last snare and I want to have this uh, snare go into my reverb, okay? So what will happen now is, let's just take this kick out for a second, is that as soon as we're at the snare, it will make this reverb thing. And then you will feel in your body that, hey, we made a little hook or we made a little fill. It's a little fill, but hey, it works. So that's a way to make fills, and I suggest you get creative with it. So maybe put on a ping pong delay as well. So I just command T and get a ping pong delay. There you go. And click on the button E again and say to yourself, you know, it is nice to have that one there, but let's also have um, let's also have the ping pong delay playing. And let's have both of those playing very, very loud. So it's a really dramatic effect. Okay, so now that we know that, let's go over the next part of theory because that was just a fun way of creating a fill. And there's tons of ways to create fills. You can also just take something else and play uh, 1 16th notes after each other with an actual drum VST, which always works, or you can create effects racks, but that's not the point for it today. We can do that maybe another time. Let's go over 1 16th triplets in Tech House. All right, so Tech House, let's go uh, 130 beats per minute-ish, and go here and create a new uh, MIDI clip, just double click, and let's create our 1 4th notes again, 1, 2, 3, 4. And let's put in our clap. Okay, on the two and the four. Two and the four sounds like this. Now, the part that I wanna tell you is that rhythm theory isn't only about drums. It's also about adding in uh, different type of sounds. Uh, so that, as in sounds as in bass or as in, uh, chords and you can place those chords also in these little parts and tech house is a really easy way of showing you where those parts go so if we go here to um to get some sound so let's just go to this i don't need a loop let's just get a sound here yeah that one and play this in on something called one eighth and then press here again triplets and let's click c here See, you can see that in triplets, there is now one, two, three, one, two, three per the bar. You see that? The one, two, three, one, two, three, one, three. And what that sounds like is this. So I'm just going to go like this and make it tiny. What it sounds like is this. You 
can make it extra groovy or like this. I like this. Because then you have that type of feel. So this is just the how to use some triplets. Now let's go into the next part and that is going into instead of having this four to the floor type of pattern let's go into something called halftime all right so halftime is really interesting so we're at 135 beats per minute right now let's go to 140 and instead of having this and this thing here which it was nice to have but let's just say goodbye to you and go over the 808 drums go to the uh, all results, I mean, go to the drums here and click on 808 kits. Okay, 808 kits, not kick, kit, kit, kit classic, there you go. Yay! And uh, program in some drums on this one. Now, because we're in half time or double time, I'm not sure what the correct term is here, but instead of having the drums, I mean the snares, fall on the 2 and the 4. The snares will now fall on the 3. Because we're counting like this, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, instead of 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. So we're counting in in eighth notes. Uh, I guess this, I don't know what's it called, double or half. But the point is this. Let's program in a kick and let's program in a snare. Let's program in some hi-hats. And then we have this beat. Very simple. Again, as you can see, these parts here are the eighth notes, but actually they're the sixteenth note. But let's let's just forget about that for a second. I'm gonna try and make it easy for you. They make the groove feel funky, right? If it would be just this, it's a bit boring. It's ball, clock, very fucking tight, but it's not funky. Let's make it extra funky by adding in these 1 16th notes again. We'll do exactly the same thing. But with this genre, I suggest you don't use 1 16th triplets with that, that funky feel. Let's not funky feel this thing, because it won't really work as good. But what instead we're going to do is we're going to place in some of this. Let's see if we have a shaker in here. Some of this rim as well. And that's, I think that's it. And the reason why it now sounds a little bit broken up and a little bit funky is because I broke this pattern of the... And as soon as you start breaking up a pattern, you get a broken up feeling of the beat itself. If I put this back and leave that there, it still sounds good. Broken up. So that's a really good way of going about it. Also, because you create a little bit of silence where your brain is used to hearing something, your body has something like, ah, yeah, ah, yeah, you know, you get into this feel. So I normally suggest breaking things up only in the fourth bar, the eighth bar, the sixteenth bar to create something cool. So you can either add a fill when it goes, or you can go, ta, 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 kaboom, gut, with silence. So silence is a big factor here. But let's say that you want to have some, some proper fucking hi-hats, because this is cute, but it's not doing its proper part. So let's just get in some hi-hats here. Okay, so I have two hi-hats. They're both a little bit different. Uh, that's just to have a play around with. And let's click in a triplet pattern over this 1 16th note pattern. And then we can create this great shuffle, which is made by uh, Bernard Purdy. And I think it would be fun to have that on this beat. So take this and go 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. Okay, and let's just make sure that that loops by itself. So I can also do this. And check out the difference between playing straight notes and playing in a triplet pattern. What you're doing now is you're technically playing in a polyrhythm, and the polyrhythm is playing two rhythms at the same time.
a triplet rhythm and a one-fourth rhythm. Again, use that kind of stuff with moderation because you don't want the person to go like, whoa, man, or maybe you do. That's fine with me too. Um, so now that we've discovered triplets also in this halftime feel, let's discover some feel and some fills and some things with also 132nd. Although I suggest 132nd is almost always too fast, um, but we can do that in a 70... No, in a 90 BPM type of thing, okay? So let's just go to 90 be beats per minute. And for 90 beats per minute, um, let's create something a little bit more hip hoppy. Okay, cool. Let's program in some drums. We're gonna go hip hoppy. So I am just programming this here, this 1 16th note, so that I can get the doop, the doop type of feel. There you go. I'm already gonna do that. I mean, uh, here. Put in my snare here and put my snare here as well. And actually, let's make that a actually, no, we'll leave it like that. And we'll do that as well. And place in this one and that one. And that's it. Make sure that we have our little feel going on. Command Shift A, Command Shift U. And let's just have a listen. Whatever. Let's also put in our hi-hats, and I like having them on the upbeats because that's just what I prefer. Very cool, very old school stuff. And now let's go into adding in 130 second type of fills. So with 130 second, there's now 30 second notes which you can add in. And 30 second notes over a one bar thing is where you can get very complicated and a bit crazy with yourself. So let's just first go like this and figure out where the 30 second notes are actually placed. So if we see that this rim shot is here, right? I'm just gonna make a 30 second note length and go to 30 second notes, you can say that around this rim shot, there's now two notes added. So the 30 second note parts are right there and right there. Now 30 second notes are extremely fast. So what you can do, generally speaking, is to create a really fast uh, pattern. So fast patterns generally are used with trap step. It goes, you know, something like that. And uh, right now we are just gonna program in uh, something in hip hop instead, and we'll see how it goes. And it might sound like shit, but who cares? So I'm gonna program it in from around here and program in one, two, three, four. So I'll program in this many snares and I'll do this and make sure that you put your velocity going up to down, because how many drummers have you known that play like, only like hardcore metal drummers would do that. And right now we are in some funky type of flow. All right, now that's cool, but how about we make this fill sound a little bit more crazy? Let's take out one thing and let's play in the kick drum instead. Now, with this being said, we're getting more into the territory of drum and bass. So, what we're going to do now is cover some drum and bass theory. And drum and bass theory, to be really honest with you, it's not that much different from this, uh, this, this type of feel that's going on here. So, I'm going to play in some drum and bass and um, go over the same theory. Now, normally I would see drum and bass as a mixture of reggae drums, funk drums, but then sped the fuck up. So if you would program in your own drums, normally speaking, you would take a funk groove and cut it up and then play it in really fast. Like the Aim, uh, Amon Brothers groove, that would be a good groove to cut up. But seeing we're programming our own things and we're trying to understand what's going on 
let's program in some drums. So instead of 90 beats per minute, we're going to go straight to 170 beats per minute. And we're going to start thinking, where can we play as things? We know that in 1 16th, funk drums are there. Right? But let's just say that we want this snare drum to be on the 16th note. Or the 1 8th note. Let's see. And let's also place in my things here on the upbeat. So that there is something going on. So that's a fun pattern to use. And again, we can take from what we've done before with the, um, what was it again? The 16th notes. And in these 1 16th triplet notes, we went. And you can add in a fill. So I always suggest that making this, you know, four bars long and going in here. And now let's have a little play around here at the end. Okay. So let's just say that the pattern goes. And then we play it here over here like this. And then here, let's play in a little fill. Remember how to do the fills. One, two, one. So you can get a really fast type of feel. You can also place things around a little bit so it doesn't sound so extremely insane, uh, like giving it a little bit of space to breathe. But let's just say, you know, you want hardcore drum and bass, that would be a fun pattern to go with. Now, normally in drum and bass, you would then also have like a tick 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 over the whole thing. But this is some basis of the theory. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed that. I talked a lot. And um, next up will be, I think, melody writing and uh, how to use different classical music components to create melody. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe. And if you want to do this the easy way, just slice the drum rack and um, you know slice the new MIDI and play it on the drum rack instead. And you can have some really fun times. Take care and goodbye.